the Cog Railway in Mount Washington in New Hampshire. It's a very popular way to get up to the top of this and see the sights. You can also drive up it on the auto road or of course you can hike up it. And uh, it can be very treacherous. It could be a very tough hike for not being that high of a mountain compared to uh, the West Coast mountains. It's uh, pretty dangerous. The weather changes very often. And many people have died on this mountain or these mountain ranges right in this area. Suicides, murder, heart attacks, hypothermia, I mean, all kinds of stuff. That people even, unfortunately, in 1967, one of those cog railways derailed and fell over, killing eight people. Some of them were children. So it's seen its share of, of death. You know, as amazing and as beautiful as this place is, there is a bit of an ominous past. So all in all, there have been over 160 recorded deaths on the presidential range. But what makes this mountain such a killer? Why have there been so many deaths here? Well, hiking up this mountain make up for a large majority of the deaths that have happened here. And usually that has to do with unusual weather. The geographical position of this mountain make the mountain susceptible to multiple weather patterns all at once. And they often collide and are bottlenecked, creating very high winds and freezing temperatures and weather that changes rapidly. Because of this, Mount Washington is often referred to as home of the world's worst weather. And I think what happens up here is that you're hiking and it's, it's not bad. It's, it's a nice day, you know, maybe you need a jacket or something. And then the storm rolls in, changes like that, and you're stuck. The first recorded death was Frederick Strickland, October 1849. 20-year-old Strickland, an Englishman, was here for college. He had just graduated and was traveling through the U.S. for a few months. He came up to the White Mountains from Boston. He wanted to hike up Mount Washington. He was advised against climbing due to bad weather and a blizzard that had happened. And while on a snowy hike to the summit, he ignored his guide's concerns over continuing on. So Strickland continued on alone and did successfully summit. And two days after that, he was discovered on the other side of the mountain in a body of water. It's believed that he was exhausted from the deep snow and the extreme cold, became disoriented, fell into the water, and died of hypothermia. So I don't know if it is the record anymore, but for many, many years, it had the world wind speed record of 231 miles an hour, which is unbelievable to think of. Some of the original buildings up there are literally chained to the rock, to the mountain. But uh, one of the biggest problems besides cold weather is visibility. As the clouds move in, you can have basically zero visibility to the point where you really can't even see you know, 25 feet in front of you. This is the second death to happen here. Miss Lizzie Bourne, daughter of Judge Bourne from Kennebunk, Maine. She was hiking with her uncle and her cousin and uh, they were hiking up a different area than what people normally hike. She was hiking part of the trail that is now the auto road. They hiked about four miles in or so. The weather was decent down below, but as they got higher up, they saw a lot of bad weather. The fog came in, they couldn't see where they were. So they decided to kind of hunker down for the night. But the crazy thing is they were headed for the tip top house, which is still up here. It's 
basically the original shelter that's still here today I'm gonna to show you and uh, they never made it they didn't know how close they were they were so close and she died right here um, she basically froze to death you know in 1855 you didn't just go down to the uh, local REI and buy a sweet hiking jacket so who knows what she was wearing but she certainly wasn't the last person to freeze to death up here this is another plaque that you can see right next to the tracks. Ernest Wentworth McAdams, 22 years old. Joseph Benjamin Chadwick, also 22 years old. Not much is known about these two. There's not a huge amount of information. They were both from Massachusetts and they were hiking near the Cog Railway. A blizzard just came in and they could no longer see and they had to basically try to shelter right, right here. And this is where they died. Very close to the top. They were almost to the shelter. So this is the tip top house. This is where they were headed and it was only a couple hundred yards away, but they could not see it because the weather was so bad. I've done a couple different videos on Mount Washington. In fact, just recently, uh, my second channel, which is shows the cog railway and everything. So if you're interested, Definitely check that out. And I'll also be posting photos of some of this stuff on my Facebook page. The link is down below. Um, but this is, this is what it looks like. Gives you an idea of how bad the weather is up here or how bad it can be at times. Had she just made it a couple hundred yards more, she would have survived. But like I said, bad weather is not the only cause of these deaths. There are all kinds of reasons why people died here. September 17, 1967, a group of 80 passengers, plus three crew, had boarded their passenger car called the Chumley and started their descent back down the mountain. Now it's important to note that the capacity of these passenger cars was 56. So all 56 seats were filled, plus 25 more standing, and then crew on top of that. The number three engine and the Chumley made its way down the tracks, about a mile or so. Now, there used to be a switch in that area which allowed ascending and descending trains to pass one another. Now that switch, which is no longer there, was not properly positioned, something that could not happen today. However, at the time, the crew assumed everything was fine and proceeded down. As the engine went over that switch, both the front and rear gears disengaged from the track, causing it to derail and plummet off the elevated tracks, leaving the passenger car in an uncontrollable descent down those tracks. It traveled 500 feet, picking up speed until it veered off and crashed off the side, killing eight people and injuring over 70. Now it's not known exactly why that switch was in the wrong position, but it's important to note that many have speculated it could have been hikers messing with the switch because that particular switch, which is no longer there, was only 240 feet away from the Appalachian Trail. But again, that is just speculation. No one really knows. So this is the steep, windy, eight-mile road that takes you up to the summit, cleverly named the Auto Road. It opened to the public in 1861, and as treacherous as this road may look, there have only been three fatalities in the over 150 years of its existence. Way back in 1880, a drunk driver driving a stagecoach somehow managed to flip the coach and killed one of his passengers. It took 104 years of people driving up and down this road to have the very next fatal accident. 1984, 22-year-old Paula Silva 
was killed on her descent when the car she was driving lost its brakes. They tell you to keep your transmission in low gear and to pump your brakes on the way down as to not overheat them. And indeed, her brakes became overheated and became useless at that point. Her car left the road and struck a tree about 100 feet off. Her husband and a friend were injured in the accident, but they survived. And the third victim, hopefully the very last, came in 2009. A 65-year-old man, Paul West, was on a motorcycle when he went off the road and crashed. I don't know if he was ascending or descending. And he died before making it to the helicopter landing zone. But, you know, that's not too bad of a record considering the amount of years that this has been open. When you consider fatalities, this is probably one of the safest roads in the country. And in addition to all of these different deaths, there is in fact one cold case that happened in 2001. Louise Chapu, a 52-year-old from Quebec, came down for a long weekend to the White Mountains area she was last seen alive November 15th before going either on the Lost Pond Trail or the Glen Boulder Trail. But she was found Thanksgiving Day, November 22nd, 2001. She had been stabbed to death and she was found somewhere off of the trail. And over 20 years later, this still remains unsolved. So that's a little bit of history about the many deaths that happened on this mountain, on Mount Washington and the surrounding mountain peaks around here. It's a beautiful area, incredible to come and see, but it just in some ways has a tragic history. So if you come here, you'll enjoy yourself, you'll love it. But especially if you're hiking up, be careful because this mountain can be a killer. All right, I'm getting back on the auto road. I'm driving back down. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.